un, dos, y un, dos, tres, y... So it's the end of October, and it's cooling down. It's like 60 degrees today. I've been doing deck work, I know you guys aren't going to believe me, for five months. And I'm going to go up and show everybody where I'm at on the deck. But in the last video, I was talking about remarinizing the engine. So I had an issue with the old heat exchanger and it was called a Manny cooler. And I thought I fixed the motor. I don't think I did. So let's go take a look at the motor. I'll kind of explain what's going on with the motor. And then we'll go to I'll do we'll do a montage of five months ago of some of the stuff I had to go through to get the deck where it's at to now and show you where I'm at now which is not even close to being done. It's been five months. So, let's go look at the motor. So this engine is a, a 6354 Perkins engine. And some of these parts you can't get like heat, the, the old heat exchanger that used to go on the side of this motor. You can't get it anymore. It was called like an old Manny cooler and it was one one piece. So the intake, the heat exchanger, and the exhaust was one giant piece. Can't even get it no more. So, like, so look down here. This right here is the Bowman heat exchanger that you get now. Then this right here is the intake for the air that had to be custom made. Then the parts on the front, there's for the thermostat housing, it had to be custom made and all the parts and then there's like a a way to get hot water antifreeze to run to your hot water tank that had to be custom made and that was like five six grand so when I took all the old heat exchanger apart the exhaust and the intake holes on the side of the motor all run along the side of the block this one right here was steam cleaned so there was water had be somehow getting into that exhaust port kicking it out kicking it out the exhaust so i just said well maybe it's the heat exchanger that's bad so i put it all on it's still losing antifreeze so right here if i put if I put my finger, it goes all the way, it's empty. It's gone. It goes all the way down to the heat exchanger tube. Put more in, it goes. Put more in, it goes. And then if I take it out and drive it, if the motor runs good, sounds good, runs good. So say I go for maybe eight hours and come back, or 16 hours, it'll use maybe a pint of antifreeze. And then it's just... I think the head gasket's bad on this motor. I don't know. That's what I'm guessing. So, if you guys, if anybody's good at this stuff, leave a comment and tell me what you think it is. But I'm pretty sure it's the head gasket. So, the idea for me is I could take all this stuff off. It's a hundred bucks for a head gasket, and then the and then another gasket set for to put all the heat exchanger and stuff back on. Probably a couple hundred bucks, three hundred bucks. But to take the head off, that's a lot of work. It makes me think I should just rebuild the head as I have it off. And I don't know what it's going to cost. I'm thinking to have the head rebuilt and the valve job and all that, probably two grand maybe. And, uh, but, I mean, it runs good. So I'm pretty sure once it gets cool, when it gets cold outside and I can't do any more deck work, the head's coming off. So that's, that's the old track. And so when it probably, it took a day, at least half a day to get that off. So we'll go below and I'll shoot, there's backing plates to it all. So all those backing plates are old, rusty. They all got to get replaced. So this is where the track begins. And 
it leaked. And so did this skylight, so did this skylight here, and so did this. And it's like that all the way down along the side of both sides of the boats where all these ceiling panels have got wet so much that they need replaced. And this is what one of the backing plates looks like. It's just rusty old piece of steel. So all those will get replaced in the stainless steel. So let's go back in the bedroom. I'll show you when I'm talking about ceiling panels, how, how every, it's just, it's something I'm going to do this winter when it's cold and replace all the ceiling panels. So see that ceiling panel is no good. It has to be, re, un, it has to be new because that chain plate was leaking. I think there was a skylight. Well, there's no skylight, but that chain plate was leaking and ruined it all. And then same with here. This hatch on the back lazarette where the rudder quadrant sets, that hatch was leaking. It ruined this ceiling panel. And then the same thing with here. That ceiling panel's bad. And there used to be valances that set low and kind of was like a decorative valance. Those all rotted and have to get replaced. And then even in these closets, even in these closets, all the ceiling panels, because see, that's where the track used to attach and there was backing plates in there. It leaked, ruined all the panels. So that's a lot of work. It's the same way at the bathroom. Anywhere along the sides of the boat, the ceiling panels have to get replaced. Now here's a montage of ripping the teak off of the deck. And then we're going to go take a look at a couple of boats, one that is free and one that's really cheap. So right here is an example of a free boat. You might have to pay the marina 500 bucks for it and then take over the what it costs to store it here. But it's an endeavor. I think it's a it's either a 32 or a 35. And the why it's free, it was at the dock and it sunk. And it sat underwater for like two or three days. But I mean it's a it's a sound boat. If if you wanted a boat for free. And you wanted to work on it, and you wanted a boat that could cross an ocean, a small boat. Uh, you could you could use this. This boat would work. So let's go up inside and take a look at the destruction that happened from it being underwater. And then we'll go take another look at another boat that costs about ten to twenty thousand dollars. That'd probably be a better way to look to get a boat. So we're up on the deck and you see everything's in disarray and the marina they pulled some somebody came pulled it out and set it up here but they didn't drill a hole in the bottom of the hole to let this water out so there's water standing in it and then you see how bad a shape it is but you could power wash this boat out and just spray it all down with bleach and put some mold mildew kill in it and you could it'd be all right it wouldn't hurt you. i mean i'm sure there's some wood and stuff that would have to get replaced and stuff and a lot of cleaning in every system nothing works you'd have to replace the engine and everything but it's free so it's somewhere to start if you were looking to for a boat and you didn't have a lot of money and you just needed you just had to have a boat and it's like see the sails there's sails on it and i think those sails might be good enough to sail you could sail in light winds so and the the deck there's no i don't feel really any soft spots so there's the the sail for the Genoa is still there. And the deck, I mean, there's a cup. It's not soft. 
but you can feel like there's some spots where it's delaminated a little bit but i'm telling you if you were mechanical and you had a lot of energy when you were young this could be a boat Right, so this right here is a Pearson 424 and it's been sitting here for a long time at least I bet 10 to 15 years and it's on the internet so you can find this boat on the internet and it's a uh, it's on it's showing for 20 grand so I guarantee you can get it cheaper but let's go I'll show you what I'm talking about when it comes to drilling a hole in the side of the hole to where the water can escape it when nobody's taking care of the boat. All right, so see, there's a hole. Somebody drilled a hole on the bottom of it and that way the boat won't fill up with water. And that's like if you have, even if you have a boat that leaks a little bit and you're gonna be gone for a year or two, that's not a bad idea to do. So let's start up here at the bow and see what going on it looks like it's got a really good furler it's an old one but i bet it still works yeah see there's nothing wrong with that furler and then the chain it's got like a three eighths three eighths chain and that maxwell that looks pretty nice So she's 42 foot and then look at this rigging this rigging is new down to there with the stay locks well 10 years new it's just never been used and then the turnbuckles are old but i think the story with this is a couple bought this boat like 10 years ago and they started on it they got a divorce it's been sitting here ever since and look, the turnbuckles back here are all new. That's all brand new rigging that's 10 years old. Never been used. It's on both sides. And the decks, nice and hard. See if there's any. And then look, there's no, the deck there, there's nothing that's looking odd. It's hard. And then it's got some kind of hard top for a, and the, for a, what do you call that? A, a, bim, a bimini. And then the, look at the size of the cockpit. It's a good size. And I'm sure it's, those winches got 48s. Those ain't cheap if you had to replace them. So let's just peek in here on the inside and see what she looks like. See, look, she's in nice shape. The woodwork's in good shape. So you see the difference between, you could pick this boat up probably for 15 grand. You see, you throw 40,000 at this or throw 40,000 at that little boat that's been underwater. You see the difference? And look back there, I see sails. Some sails back there. There's a set of sails, there's some sails there. And it's dry, because they drilled a hole in it. And I think, that right here's a bed. There's a bed. And then right there is the chart table. So you're right there, so you could sleep there and be close to the to the cockpit when you're out and then there's a bedroom way back there in the back so that's it that's the video so if i was looking to flip a boat i think i'd pick this one